Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here in Chicago to reaffirm our commitment to defend the freedom and security of all our citizens. Gary, if you can go over here to the left, you can see police are arresting a couple of guys down here that they have pulled out of the crowd. In good times and in bad, our alliance has endured. In fact, it has thrived because we share an unbreakable commitment to the freedom and security of our citizens. They're most clashing with it. You can see they're dragging them right out. And actually, take and show you if we can, off to the left. Gary, pan it with me, if you will, off to the left. You can see the reinforcements have shown up down here. State police in their own riot gear have amassed over here on Michigan Avenue, just north of Cermak, standing by, waiting in case things turn ugly on that side. Wait. Have amassed over here on Michigan Avenue, just north of Cermak, standing by, waiting in case things turn ugly on that side. You gotta be kidding me. My name is Vermin Supreme. I am a friendly fascist. I am a tyrant that you should trust, and you should let me run your life, because I do know what is best for you. It's a beautiful day for a revolution. Free ponies for all Americans. Strong teeth for a strong America. Harnessing the awesome power of zombies. I will also be traveling back in time to kill baby Hitler before he's even born. I represent the records too, damn my body. Vermin saved me. Stay on the other side. Nonviolent direct action. Mr. Mitt and Ann Robbie. Vermin Supreme can lead an army that'll fuck up a new Gingrich event real good. I would like to think that what Vermin is saying is that this is what you can do too. I met Vermin Supreme under exceptional circumstances at the NATO summit protests of May 2012. Tens of thousands took to the streets of Chicago to voice their concerns about the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the wars it administers overseas alongside the United States government. I left my home state of Minnesota for a week and did my best to document what happened. It was beautiful and terrifying. Look at these police! They don't look like police! What do they look like? Stormtroopers! Law enforcement people are supposed to protect and respect the rights of free speech and assembly. And that's all we're fucking doing here, yeah. is saying what we believe in, right? right? So you guys keep on doing it, yeah. because it's your right, goddammit, yeah. and don't ever give it up. Yeah.
see police officers use military-grade weaponry and tactics on roped-off civilians who had reached the end of a peaceful march. Uh, I mean, I wasn't the same person for two weeks. Now, could y'all tell me if, now, are they talking to the people on the other street with that thing, or, are they, or is that directed towards us? The Chicago police leadership, which was hailed as, you know, this uh, beacon of heroic um, decision-making, well, those white shirts were about 20 heads removed from the actual batons that were swinging. Hello, CO, why do you come over and talk to me so you can tell me what's happening so I can tell these people what's happening? That would go a long way towards achieving whatever the hell you're trying to do. All we want everyone to do is walk west. That's as simple as that. Okay. Vermin Supreme was up at the front through all of this. I have been told that the U.S. Constitution guarantees freedom of assembly and free speech. Oh. I have also been told that the Chicago Police Department would like us to walk west that way. I'm just saying that, okay? He's just one person, but it's almost crazy to think of how much more brutality they would have, there would have been if Vermin Supreme wasn't there. Attention, Chicago Police Department. I am demanding your immediate surrender. Come out with your hands up and your pants down. I have you surrounded by love. Uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed themselves. I understand some took an architectural boat tour, some have run along the lakefront. Uh, Chicago is a great place, and we look forward to having you back again. Chicago police, you may want to remove your hats for this. It's the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> You talk about getting little butterflies in your stomach before going on stage to read a poem or something. Fuck, baby! I mean, I'm up there with a full horn from like thousands of cops, and thousands of protesters, and who knows what could go down. Because once again, the police's number one weapon: this fear, this uncertainty, the stress levels, the hormones that your body releases when you when you're faced with this uh, fight or flight response. Your mind is telling you, this does not seem safe. These men have sticks. They could hit me. They're going to spray chemicals on me. I should get the fuck out of here. And yet, flying in the face of common sense, we stay there. <laughs> And we continue assembling peaceably and celebrating and, and putting out our messages and, and being there together. navigating even the most chaotic scenarios. He kept people safe. He challenged the police and made some of them laugh. Eh, whatever. Hey now, hey now, hold on. Stop the scuffle. We don't need no scuffles, yo. He displayed remarkable courage and prevented unnecessary bloodshed. And throughout all of it, he was hilarious. I had never seen anybody do this before, and I haven't seen anybody do it since. What the fuck ever. Bunch of cops everywhere, and we're stuck in the middle. Jokers to the left of me. <laughs> Jokers to the right here. I am stuck in the middle with you. I started to wonder about him, and about what protest movements, and really all of us, might be able to learn from him. Was he a wingnut? Maybe. But a very special kind of wingnut. Whatever. Go west, Go west young man. West is California. 
California is the place I'd rather be, and they loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly Hills, that is. All right. Thank you. All right. Be safe, everybody. I'm on the other side. I'm actually in the middle of two lines. How safe do I feel right now? I guess I'm out of that thing. <laughs> I couldn't escape the question. Who is Vermin Supreme? But in order to answer that question, it's imperative to know a little bit about the waters Vermin swims in and the currents that ultimately make an impact on all of our lives. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. After eight years of George W. Bush, a president elected by the Supreme Court, a generation of Americans set out to test the limits of electoral politics. President Barack Obama promised a sea change. But Obama didn't end authoritarian Bush-era policies. As time went on, they instead only expanded in scope. Uh, a drone strike is a terror weapon. One drone strike, uh, they turned the entire village against the Americans. It's a terrorist operation and a terrorist generating machine. Alienated by a dramatic collapse that revealed the American financial system to be an enormous Ponzi scheme that offered little future, many of the same Americans that elected Barack Obama into office set out to change things by other means. A few dozen protesters moved into Zuccotti Park near Wall Street renaming it Liberty Square. In the weeks to come, untold thousands would visit and take up the Occupy banner. Our process! Our process! Is correct democracy! Is correct democracy! Is correct democracy! Hacktivists from the web collective Anonymous emerged from behind their computers and showed up in public squares. As the movement exploded in cities across the nation and throughout the world, a nationally orchestrated federal crackdown was already being devised behind closed doors. In especially poignant moments, those least expected to led the charge. They tell you we are dreamers. They tell you we are dreamers. The true dreamers are those who think the true dreamers are those who think things can go on indefinitely the way they are. The only thing I can say, having been in the middle of similar movements is that this one is is real and this one could take them all down and an opening two minutes to mr vermin supreme thank you gingivitis has been eroding the gum line of this great nation long enough and must be stopped for too long this country has been suffering a great moral and oral decay in spirit meanwhile and in after an extravagant debate performance on december 19 2011 a different kind of politician became a viral sensation and reached millions across the globe. Our very salivation is at stake. Yes, I am a politician. I will promise you anything your little electorate heart desires because you are my constituents. You are the informed voting public and because I have no intention of keeping any promise that I make. Vote early, vote often. Remember, a vote for Vermin Supreme is a vote completely thrown away. Do you still stand by your pledge made in 2008 to provide a pony for every American. Yes, I do, sir. And of course, the important thing to realize is that it is a federal pony identification program where you will need your pony with you at all times. Thank you very much. What other entitlement programs are you for? Just that one. That's, that's enough. Vermin Supreme took his place as an established internet meme, inspiring a proliferation of spin-offs, auto-tunes, appropriations and recombinations of his image and performance. Oh, one, one more thing. Um, uh, uh, Jesus told me to uh, make Grand Terry Dave. Okay, thank you, Mr. Supreme. <laughs> yeah. We grew up, after the Cold War had ended, we grew up where there seems to be no alternative to global capitalism. 
all politics seemed to be simply economic management. So on the one hand, we had this vision where all of social life was swallowed up by the values of the market. And on the other hand, we also are raised with this kind of ecological awareness, the, the awareness that um, we're destroying ourselves, that everything we do, every day we live, we are making it impossible for future generations. We were raised with this sense of a contradiction. One, this is the only thing that, uh, that we can be doing. On the other hand, this is destroying us. More than anything, what was so profound about the Occupy movement was that it created a space where that question or those tensions in our lives could honestly be reflected upon, where people could actually ask themselves and actually find other people who could ask the question, is this what we want? People really got this vision that maybe they could do things differently. And that gave people a lot of hope, sometimes for the very first time in their lives. It was a generational moment. It just reminded me of me in, in my 20s, you know, first gaining a, in a political awareness, a political consciousness, and, and just stepping right up because it seemed to be the only thing and the natural thing to do when my eyes opened. Welcome to the magical land of make believe. Make believe. Anything can happen. And uh, yeah, this is the Rainbow Gathering. Two months after NATO, Vermin asked me to join him at the 40th annual National Rainbow Gathering in the Cherokee National Forest. Vermin and his wife Becky have been attending the gatherings for 25 years. I camped for nine days in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee eating, talking, working, and celebrating daily with many of the thousands of outsiders, misfits, poets, and renegades that flock to this temporary autonomous zone each year. A mule, you can hit him in the head with a baseball bat and not hurt him nearly as much as you would if you hit your pony. Ponies can be mighty irascible. The experience was, to say the least, truly weird. I got my teeth brushed by the president. <laughs> Scientists cavorted with train hoppers. Libertarians served food to communists. Law enforcement officers, like Imperial Scouts in foreign territory, occasionally wandered through bewildered. The entire process, much of which is an orgiastic freewheeling party, culminates on July 4th with the syncretic religious ritual that is at once profoundly silly and deeply moving. The Rainbow Gathering is living proof that anarchism can work, if only for a week. Like, wow, this dude is amazing. Like, where did he come from? Like, he just like, like he just landed from a spaceship somewhere and just came down to say hi, you know what I mean? Like, What stands out in my mind most about Vermin Supreme, um, first off, is his odor. A man with a rubber galosh on his head, I immediately felt some kind of bond with him. Even if you don't see him, you smell him. He seemed like a person I could, I could, I could communicate with. I think Vermin Supreme is great at, at sort of getting people to tune in in a different way. I think that he might make some people think. He kind of gets people to laugh at the roles they're playing even as they're playing them. He's highlighting the problems and, you know, the lies of the political system that everyone <laughs> sees. He's making a show of it. It reveals more than what you can get at with uh, with some kind of uh, logical analysis. The boot is almost like a Roman helmet, and it's the way he wears it. The amount of courage that he displays is also, I think, pretty, pretty poignant, too. He wears it with this confidence like a warrior. Like, wow, you know, like, you've got a lot of testicular fortitude to be able to do that. He brings a reality check to electoral politics, I think. He exemplifies the absurdity of that whole situation of electoral politics and millions of dollars spent to put these assholes into power. It's gonna maybe draw people into the political scene that otherwise have lost interest. You know, they don't see these people as representing them. And then they see somebody like Vermin Supreme out there and, and it makes them pay attention. I think it's very principled what he does. Vermin is his own 
show wherever he goes. Vermin's been working the New Hampshire primary as a presidential candidate for two decades. But in 2012, he took his campaign to the next level. So why do you run? I mean, why do I run? Change. Because I can. Because this is America. Ah, because ah. some people tell you that it's a citizen's duty to vote. I insist that it's a citizen's duty to run. And I am running. I am exercising my civic duty. I am representing my constituency. I, I represent a very large, well, okay, a very tiny segment of America, but that very tiny segment of America is a whole lot of people, uh -huh. a lot of people. Who are and these people? Who are these people? Well, they are freaks. <laughs> I think everybody loves the New Hampshire primary, whether they resent it or not. He came out with the entourage and there was the police and I was going in and I was so close to shaking uh, Mr. Santorum's hand. But then I heard this uh, this awful racket. What are you doing? Stop it, sir. At first, I believe it was his his uh, goons were, were shoving me as I was trying to get in to shake uh, Mr. Santorum's hand and wish him well. And then it was the police. And I was shoved and backed off, uh, you know, way over there by the cop who, who said, "You are safe here. Safe right over here. Yeah. You're safe like everybody else. I Thank you, sir." It's just it's a hard thing to take control of here. Come on out, Ron Paul. I know you're in there. Come on, talk to me. Come on, Ron Paul. Come on. Come on. I know you don't want to run me over. That would be very bad. That would be some very bad press. It's an easy place to hide if you want to go into the woods, but if you want to be a politician or a public figure of any sort, your life's pretty much an open book here. There is no escape. The media owns you now. There's lots of opportunities for us to find their Weebles. Let's say that is this is a protest pit being the public street, I'm guessing. I'm sure that's fine. Oh, sorry there, sir, I didn't mean to be assaulted by you. Guessing. I'm sure that's fine. Oh, sorry there, sir, I didn't mean to be assaulted by you. Jack Gilchrist, Gilchrist Mill. Jack Gilchrist, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Could you have my prompt? Oh, I am. I'm on my way, yes, sir. Yes, sir. On your way, is that way? Oh, <laughs> you're a beautiful man, sir. Thank you. As Jack will attest, if people are here growing their, their businesses, expanding their enterprises, that's good news here. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Ronnie. Thank you. Oh, man. Go, go away, man. Go away, man. Go, go, go away, man. All right, we'll see you at the next campaign stop, eh? Okay, so and that's that. it. What's the, what's, the, what's the citation on it's that? It's an ordinance, city ordinance. Uh, so, so it's, I'm just asking what the, it's like a $100 ticket? Yes. Like that? Okay, just, just give so me not a up, criminal offense, not, not no, a custody no, situation. Not no. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Save us, Newt. Save us. Save America. Vermin Supreme can lead an army that'll fuck up a Newt Gingrich event real good. Vermin took third place in the Democratic New Hampshire primary with 833 votes, trailing second place candidate Ed Cowan by only 112. Democratic incumbent Barack Obama received 49,080 votes. And once again, I don't define victory by the number of votes. I've already won. It's mine. Victory is mine. Why? What? How? It's a moral victory. Okay. It's a what? A moral victory. Moral victory. It's an oral victory. I won it. Why is it a victory? because I've defined the debate in my own terms, because I have come here. I'm not beholden to anyone or anything. I, I represent my constituents and my constituents only. I am not bought by an incorporation. I can say anything I want to. I can do anything I want to, and it will not affect my standing in the polls because they don't count me in the polls. <laughs> I first arrived at Vermin's home in the dead of night. This is where I slept. The place was much more whimsical by daylight. A compound, a fun house, a retreat. Vermin's own surrealist Walden Pond.
On this site in 1623, the Dorchester Adventures founded the nucleus of the Massachusetts Bay Colony and the fishing industry here. Roger Conant averted bloodshed between two factions contending for a fishing stage, a notable example of arbitration in the beginning of New England. There are a lot of plaques you see about, you know, this massacre or that massacre or this battle or that battle, but, you know, I've seen very few plaques uh, commemorating arbitration and averting bloodshed through working it out uh, with words. Late August, despite the threat of a hurricane, and for that matter, despite the fact that he was running as a Democrat this year, Vermin traveled all the way to Tampa, Florida, and set out to be nominated as the Republican Party's presidential candidate. Is that your real name? It's yours. It's street legal. Driver's license, passport. It needs to be so in order to get on the ballot. So when I sue the cops, I like to have it on my real deal name. You mind if I ask your age? I am, uh, well, I'll, I'll lie until it's 62. There's a reason that Vermin Supreme has his age listed in 30 different ways in articles written over the past 12 years. I will point out that there has never been an accidental zombie escape at any commercially licensed zombie uh, power turbine facility. Wow, that's true and that's hard to argue with. Wait, there's never been a... I, I can't off the top of my head think of the most egregious nonsense he's ever told people, but sometimes when, I, when I'm reading other articles, it's just... What's, uh, what are we marching for today? Uh, we are marching for our lives, I believe. We are marching today in solidarity with all these police officers who have joined us to show our disgust with the system and how we must all overthrow it real soon. Am I right, officer? No comment. Also, uh, there's so much more there. My name is Vermin Supreme. I'm running for president of America, and I'm a friendly fascist, a tyrant you can trust, and I'm also an anarchist. America was founded on this, this idea that was dangerous and actually crazy. Uh, I believe that we could all live better together if we cooperate and that mutual aid is the most important thing in our lives to help one another. That people could, you know, govern themselves. Please, chafing is a very important issue to me because I believe personally that uh, chafing can lead to police violence. It's not just all telling cops to make sure their balls don't get chafed because they're in the deep south. Call me a utopian if you will, but that's the way I feel. And I don't believe that we need a government to tell us where we need to march today, but here you are. No matter how ridiculous he looks, these are messages that do resonate with people. You can look on on a video and it feels like one thing, but to be in the streets surrounded by police with you know semi-automatic rifles and riot gear and helmets and shin pads and shoulder pads for you know 60 hippies in the street, it, it should, that kind of overkill is intimidating. You got whatever you need to get rid of us. You know, come on, you have overwhelming force. You got the freaking sticks. You got the gas. You got the pepper spray. You got all this obnoxious stuff. He's a leader, and he's you know he's an experienced leader. Let's face it. A lot of the people who still are brave enough to be putting themselves on the line are much younger than Vermin Supreme. And it's understandable. I get frustrated with you know, general apathy, but I don't blame somebody who's 40 or 45 and up with a family and kids who needs to be at work the next day to put food on the table for not showing up to a protest where they know that giant police officers are gonna be swinging billy clubs at them like baseball bats. And this is my special request to all you troopers all turtled up. If at any time during this event, during the next several days, you are ordered to attack or what have you, please pull your punches. You don't have to hurt anybody. Uh, you know, I, the, the crowd will eventually disperse. He's really savvier, I think, than a lot of people might give him credit for. If you look at a guy with a boot on his head and a long scraggly beard and, um, and a demeanor that looks like he might be off his meds, he's he's actually a very shrewd man. And I think he's shrewd in a, in a way that really harkens back to the earliest days of the political process. It was a sort of assumed that you would do whatever it took to, to get the attention that you needed. You made a lot of noise. You had people bang on things when you walked down the street. Why? So people would look out the window and they'd say, who is that? Now, unfortunately, that doesn't work as well in this day and age as having a few million dollars, you know, seed money so that you can go out and then raise the tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars it now takes to run for president. Hi, Vermin Supreme, running for president of America. Vote for me or, or oh, America's gonna go to hell, bastard. You can see Becky schmoozing up the cops. She watches my ass, she, she does backup for me. Essentially assuring the cops that they shouldn't arrest me is what she's doing. I'm feeling good about receiving the nomination on the floor. 
Um, and I'm the only candidate who will fully fund time travel research. The only candidate who will go back in time and kill baby Hitler before he's even born. That's my guarantee to you. With my bare hands, I might add. Uh, follow. follow you? Follow. Okay, I will. <laughs> I really like this guy. He might not like law enforcement, but I really like this guy. I said, he loves law enforcement. Are you kidding? He's like, he's got his right on about the freedom of speech. He doesn't yell. He's very respectful. He tells the truth. Oh, my uh, goodness. This is and so funny. he's funny. like, my name's Brian. I want to shake your hand and, um, you know, just to let you know he can go past this truck. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think that what Vermin is saying is that this is what you can do too. See, I didn't even think of go trying to get closer. I didn't even think of it. That is so darn funny. Becky, you are the B-E-S-T best of all the R-E-S-T rest. And I L-O-V-E, love you all, a T-I-M-E time. Hey. You can have effect, you know, if you are yourself, if you are willing to put yourself on the line, if you're willing to make a fool of yourself. Have a beautiful convention and uh, thank you for voting. Vermin Supreme. Making America a safer place by locking you up. <laughs> Vermin has run as both a Democrat and a Republican. Um, and I suppose one thing he does is wh whatever party he runs for, he draws a pretty sharp contrast against the rest of the candidates. Okay, you're good. Come on through. Okay, that's good. Come on through. Hi, Vermin. How you doing? It's good to see you. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah, but, but you said I could be like with no, the no, president no, of Excuse me, Becky, Becky Stanton. But, sir. And when they ask me who's the president of you, Becky, 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 Stan, Stan, I'm going to say, you know, I don't know. Do you know? So, sir, now, uh, what are you, how are you prepared to help uh, save America from this imminent zombie invasion? I think that's the real question. Well, just answer my question, sir. Mandatory toothbrushing laws? Zombie preparedness? Time travel research? Free points for all Americans? Michael Bolton, can you sing us a song? Oh, please, Michael Bolton, sing us a song. If I were Michael Bolton, I wouldn't be walking around getting a cap, I'll tell you that. <laughs> When he was little, little, he would call himself Gaga, and he had his own language, and he would say, Mickabok. I don't know what he was talking about for months. That meant drink the milk. And they'd give it to him, and he'd say, Odin, and that was thank you. But Burma was very shy until, until his dad left. And when his dad left, he came right out of his shell, and he became Vermin Supreme. I mean, hundreds of people come up and ask me what his real name is, and I say I'm sworn to secrecy. He was hysterical in high school. He was very brilliant in the National Honor Society and all that stuff, and also very creative. He would wear a top hat and tails to school, and his room would look disastrous, but it would all have certain meaning and everything, kind of like his house is now. One day he was doing something ran up on the stage during a, someone's performance and started singing. And so he like got arrested by the principal and uh, the principal just said, you can't do that. So I had to get down to the high school. And I said, that was funny, don't you think so? And the principal said, yes, it was very funny, but we can't let him do it because everybody else would want to do it. So he got away with a lot of stuff. Well, he certainly smoked a lot of weed, that's for sure. And that brought on uh, the uh, big pig is watching you campaign. Half the high school, would go and smoke and stuff over by the canal, and it would be the canal club, and they'd all go over there and sing and dance and do whatever they wanted to. And that's where you went and lunchtime and smoked weed. Everybody did. Someone said that they thought they something like they saw the police scanning them or something, or through binoculars or something. I don't know what. One day, the cop cars tore up the ground and. They would grab a kid and they said, no, no, that one with the red shirt. And they'd take him away and bust him for smoking weed. And so Vermin made these t-shirts and it was this big pig, a funny cartoon pig smoking. And, uh, and it just said, big pig is watching you. And he sil silk screened them all himself and, uh, and then he sold them. That was his first really uh, protest, if you will, uh, uh, activist kind of thing, saying, you know, this is bullshit. The pig was so cute, the little, little hat on, little badge, uh, smoke a cigar. <laughs> Parents wanted them, everybody wanted them. I mean, this is the 70s, you gotta understand. Uh, the time this happened, you know, um, you could smoke anywhere, and it wasn't hard to get alcohol in, and it was just a lot, lot more freer sort of society. Back then, I guess the kids got away with a lot more. For the seniors, they had to pick a, a figure in the local government. Vermin ran for mayor and he won. 
And then at his high school graduation, he filled his top hat with tin foil and then charcoal, and he set his hat on fire while he was out in the field waiting for the names to be called. But he just voiced his opinion uh, uh, against the establishment, which was the, uh, of course, in high school, you gotta rebel, and he did it very well. After a disappointing experience with the Republicans, Vermin made his way to Charlotte, North Carolina to challenge the Democratic incumbent. Bring me the head of Barack Obama. Vermin is a great political performance artist in the tradition of the ancient cynics. The ancient cynic philosopher Diogenes of Sinope was the famous homeless philosopher of ancient Athens who lived in a tub and uh, would engage in a sort of public mockery that he called philanthropy. Welcome to Checkpoint Obama. Please have your birth certificates ready for immediate inspection. Please have your dental records ready for casual perusal. Please remove your shoes for public safety. That is loving your fellow man by mocking them. Please be prepared to remove your pants for your TSA prostate exam. Remember it's in the name of national security. It will make you safer and it's part of Obamacare. His analysis was that basically life is much more simple than people make it out to be. <laughs> you can solve your desires very easily. Your desires basically are reduced to food, shelter, sex, friendship. Um, and you can get all these very quickly without having to you know, go and sell your labor and then buy other things. And you know, he's got an analysis of desires that become too complicated. And he thinks that this fogs up or clouds up our mind the proper response for the cynic to that is to make fun of people. <laughs> Please be prepared to remove your shoes. Thank you. Sir, yes, sir. You step on over there for me, please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> how bad do you? How bad do you need me to, really? To mock those that are that are making things more complicated. We don't want to do anything other than to ask you to okay. do that. Okay. You know, it's okay. going to be up to you from okay. there. Well, once again, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. No, there's no stories. Right now, you can tell me once you get over there. From here, we just need you over there. Okay? All right. So, essentially, you're saying straight up, if I don't move, you'll, I'll be subject well, to arrest? Well, eventually, you would be subject to arrest eventually. And but we don't it, want it, to do but that. it would be eventual. Eventually, yes. would, We would have a little talk and chat. We just need to keep the area here. Yeah. Yeah. You can talk yeah. while you're I, on I, out there. We don't mind you saying what you got to say. Oh, just yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'd like to be where I am. And I take great comfort that even in this day and age, Diogenes is still alive. <laughs> Vermin ordinarily works alone, or with Becky as backup. But at the DNC, all of that changed. I met Vermin Supreme when I was uh, doing my um, reality sitcom. I have a little one on YouTube, it's called Quiet Desperation, showing the struggles of creative types. And I had an open casting call and uh, Vermin showed up. And, you know, his comedy timing was just absolutely impeccable. It was like uh, Bill Murray timing and the personality. It was him. You know, a lot of actors bring it up on stage and, you know, that's where they keep it. And then off stage, they're a different person. But it was his natural style. It was who he was. You know, he was already unplugged from a lot of the linears and he was just an absolute brilliant sort of personality. Maybe God has a DVD that he records you and me and lets his drinking buddies watch you fuck up while they're laughing their asses off. It's like someone put a little condom on my dreams because now I can't feel a fucking thing. Vermin saved me. Yeah, we hit it off that day, needless to say. <laughs> At the DNC, it was absolutely incredible to see Vermin in his element. To be honest, it was a complete revelation. It was like Andy Kaufman diving into politics. It was incredible. I mean, you're going into the lion's den. You have like a thousand police officers on these bikes and in these motorcycles. Like a true child, you're born, born to be wild. scary to you know sort of see that element you know almost like a police state with the gates lined up on the side the free speech zone is now open 
if you would like to enter it. I understand you think that it is the cage, but you can enter it and there is an opportunity for you to trip. And when we got to the Occupy camp, you know, to a certain degree, a lot of those cats were even scarier and stuff, just because a lot of them have a lot of fire with what they're protesting. And I don't know, man. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can catch more flies with uh, honey and stuff. Sykes, nice to see you. Hughes, how you doing? Aquino, beautiful people. At Manus, nice to see you. Robert, how you doing? Green, nice to see you. Kasky, what a wonderful world we live in, isn't it? 19-15, Army Field Manual. Know your troops by name. <laughs> Gonna try to make the boys in blue smile. Hey! Hot, hot dogs, dogs and applesauce. Come on. Hot, hot dogs and applesauce. Apple sauce. One time. Hot, hot dogs and applesauce. Gun to arrest dirty hippies at the Occupy. Come on. Hot dogs and applesauce. Apple and maybe we'll get married someday. I have a merch table in the car over there. My name is Rob Patillo. Last verse. Gonna waste my money at the strip club. Come on, hot dogs and applesauce. One time, hot dogs and applesauce. Come on, hot dogs and applesauce. Gonna go to the strip club and scrap some tickets. Come on, hot dogs and applesauce. And maybe we'll get married one day. On top of being a candidate, on top of being a protester, he was a liaison between the cops and the protesters. Once again, Bourbon Supreme Rally and friends, we are being allowed to march on to try on, and then we'll take a right, and we'll see what happens from there. So, I mean, the cops were convinced he was the head of Occupy. How far up are you playing the game? You know you don't have to get... He knows what he needs to say to calm a situation, and he knows what he needs to convey. You tell me where you want to turn, okay? All right, I'll be right I'll, I'll, Okay, how about this? Uh, walk a little bit, um, and when it, when it looks like we have to make a decision, uh, maybe give us a few minutes to make that, make that decision. Thank you, sir. And it reinvested my faith that, you know, even the idea of the protest can be evolved so that, you know, I mean, both parties are on the same page. We're sort of on the, you know, cop route at this moment, but that's, that's where we're at. I made it clear that it would be preferable for us to, to see the delegates and shit like that. That's all I can say. Some anarchists and some punks would call it, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, selling out to the pig and the man, but those people are so short-sighted, and I, I think, I don't know, it's, it's a brilliant way of handling with situations. Hi, how are you doing today? Good to see you. You got your big ribs? They are it's taking choice. these children and turning them into these sandwiches. McDonald's can no longer be allowed to harvest these jumbo fetuses in order to make their McRib sandwiches. These are some Occupy Wall Street. No, no, we're not. We, are, we are not Occupy Wall Street. I have many constituents, sir. In fact, me and Randall Terry, we, no. we go back. Don't tell me. No, no. You're no. with him. I know. I know Randall. Randall's my buddy. Really? Oh, I, I'm the guy who glitter bombed him during the debate up in New so Hampshire. But people like, they, they like funny people saying stupid shit, you know, it's Mad Magazine, you know. <laughs> Mr. did you know that giant mutant fetuses were being factory farmed in Idaho to create the McRib sandwiches? Did you know that? Okay, what's it going to call? I've got the, the, my magic glitter here, which is going to turn these fine folks gay. That's what democracy is about. We get there one step at a time by building the grassroots movement that Occupy represents and by building a real public interest political party that is not controlled by Wall Street and not controlled by the 1%. Uh, Ms. Stein, I have one quick question. Uh, where do you stand on the Free Ponies for All Americans platform? <laughs> and number two, it's a two-part question. Can I have my megaphone back? Girl. Tonight there's a Vermin Supreme dance party, anti-losing, pro-winning, I don't know the title of it. Anyway, so we're just trying to contemplate what we can do to make tonight a little more exciting than the earlier occasion, which was a lot of walking and sweating and little joy for me personally. We want more. We want more joy. And only one hour from now, our nomination will be in, and we are celebrating a night that's going to change the history of the world. He's going to keep the McRib around forever. He's going to give a free pony to everybody.
Despite not being nominated at the Republican or Democratic National Conventions, Vermin pressed on and celebrated, with a promising new protege at his side. DNA gene splicing to create a race of two fairies. Strong teeth for strong America. Free ponies for all Americans. Reagan used to like chop wood. Ronald Reagan, he was a great wood chopper man. The crockery shit with which the cooks in charge intend to fool and barge of blindly lead the swarming masses of bastards and asses, introduction of self-destruction to taste the waste producing least with enough candy grudge to flood the blood and drown in the brains and make us die! Yeah! My name is Nick Lipman. My pleasure, playing rhythm and blues. Stand by. Countdown. Ten seconds to firing. Vermin spent his early 20s in Baltimore, the greatest city in America. These were formative times. Vermin and I go back some 30 years, I guess. Vermin and I go back to... Um, the late 70s, I think. To the, uh, the days of the Marble Bar, the Jockey Club, up by Druid Hill Lake. Come on, buddy. Um, it was a huge mansion where Vermin lived with a whole bunch of crazy art people. He moved into the Jockey Club right before I did. He was out, and I remember going into his room, and um, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. It would look arbitrary, but then if you really looked at it, you realized that there was, there was definitely something going on. And I was hoping that um, whatever kind of a mutant lived there, he was going uh, to be one of ours. And it turned out he was one of ours. One of the first things he ever did that really fascinated me was he was going around and he was collecting anything he found. Fingernails, ticks. Splinters. I mean, a lot of it was just really disgusting stuff. And then it, it just accumulated to the point where he took this, um, it was like a, a gumball machine. And all of these things were in there. And then you pressed the little thing, and these would be the treats that came out. We built this fun house in the basement. Anybody that came over could go in it and, you know, and, and, you know, and try to get through it. It took us months to build this thing, and it was really, it was really incredible. This is a great fun house. Yeah, yeah it's a great fun house. It's very, very original, more interesting than those. And they had these parties there, jockey club parties. And, you know, there was hundreds and hundreds of people that went to these things. And we would have, you know, 16 kegs for these. These were huge, huge parties. You see them approaching the cops, you know, the head cop, the guy in the white shirt, you know, going up to like wheel and deal with him. And we'd st uh, Fuck, we better just start packing up the gear and get out of here. Like, you know, like, oh man, fucking vermin. You, know, you see the cop looking at him like, what the fuck is this? And he'd be wearing these crazy outfits, but somehow he would just talk to them and they'd be like, okay. Minutes later, they're shaking hands like they went to high school together or something. And vermin comes back and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, you guys be careful, okay? Yeah, no problem, keep partying. <laughs> he came up with the Vermin Supreme and then he, then he decided that he was gonna start running, he was gonna do the politics. And that's when he ran for, um, for mayor of Baltimore. What are you running for? Mayor. Mayor of what? For Baltimore.
you know, I, I really think that even particularly at that time in Baltimore history, he would have made a brilliant mayor. I am running for mayor of the entire United States of America. Work will make you free. I met the vermin in Boston in 1992. Our politics has been turned into show business. I have a standing offer, a standing challenge to each and every other presidential contender for a dueling chainsaw crutch match in the steel cage of doom. And he just took it to the extreme. So I think he's a good communicator. I should spend our time on Vermin Supreme? Not a chance. What, like I want to cover Sam Donaldson? Yes, there are only four more shopping years until the millennium. Anybody who would dress up like this deserves a chance. What's your message? Thank you. My name is Vermin Supreme. I am a friendly fascist, a tyrant that you can trust. Do you support mandatory toothbrushing? <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, uh, in fact, I think that my staff has been had all their practice uh, with sneaking into people's bathrooms and watching them at night to see if they do <laughs> if they do toothbrush or not. Together we can repeal the First Amendment. It's an offensive law. Together we can get rid of this free expression. We can get these people off the streets and get them out of business. We can run this country like a real business. Make it all private property. In about 120 hours, the Nashville polls will close and year 2000, New Hampshire primary will be over. Ladies and gentlemen, ask them the toilet question. Mr. Supreme and I are the only candidates in the race who have real world experience. We know what it's like to clean a toilet. That's rented by the Bush campaign, and they don't want you in, and you'll have to leave. So once again, of course, it's, it comes down to uh, public access. I mean, George Bush Sr. does have another term coming, and I'm just wondering why George W. Th feels that it's right to uh, take that from his father. Well, you have to take that up to him. Hi, I'm Vermin Supreme, fake reporter, and we are here live in New York City at the National Republican Convention. If Bush and Cheney got in a fight, who do you think would win? Who, Bush and Cheney to get on fight? Yeah, fight each other. That will never happen, baby. If George Bush and Osama bin Laden decided to settle their differences through panty wrestling, who do you think would win? I'm getting complaints. Apparently, several of the delegates uh, whom we were asking questions were somehow offended uh, by the tone, if not the tenor, of the questioning. We were definitely detained by a number of New York detectives, a number of Secret Service. Uh, as a matter of fact, one uh, Secret Service agent uh, named Vince recognized me very clearly from the DNC street protest. And so and uh, somehow made the connection that I was some sort of connected with anarchist protesters. Well, I mean, obviously that's not the case. Apparently, somebody let the President of the United States in here. <laughs> um, the good Americans are clapping like fools. <laughs> It's just amazing. They're having so much fun here. Okay, sorry. Okay, it's okay. okay we're, we're being told that we have to move, and we are moving that way because we love our president. Mission accomplished. Um, Abu Ghraib. Apparently being detained. Uh, somebody's holding me by the arm. Uh, we are once again being checked out by uh, members of, I'm assuming, the Secret Service. Yes. Uh, the crowd is getting a little unruly. Uh, uh, I, it seems like violence could break out at any minute. Okay. Senator Edwards, how can the U.S. slave labor force ever hope to compete with the Chinese slave labor force? Rudy, I have a present for you. It's a clown nose. I'd like to give. I'd like to present you with this clown nose, Rudy. Run away, Rudy! You chicken! Come on out and talk to me, Rudy! Come out and talk to me. Rudy! Come out and talk to me, you chicken! Voila! And someday I'm gonna get such a big pile of leaves down there that I'll be able to jump right off this cliff on down there and it'll be a lot of fun. Abracadabra. This song is a reminder that this land is your land. The day before the first birthday of Occupy Wall Street also marked the day of the first ever in-person meeting of Vermin Supreme 
and his 2012 running mate, Jimmy McMillan, of the Rent is Too Damn High party. Since 2010, Jimmy McMillan has known what it's like to live life as a political meme. Despite his surreal approach to politics, or maybe ultimately because of it, he may understand what it's like to be Vermin Supreme better than anyone else in the world. Let me step up to the plate. I am Jimmy McMillan. I represent the rent is too damn high party. I represent the American people, those who are suffering. Can't afford to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Working eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, and a third job. Just lost a home to foreclosure. Once again, why? You said it, the rent is too damn high. Supreme is what the Constitution stands for. Beautiful Constitution, creature of God. I remember long ago, somebody told me, you can't go to church with sneakers on. Fucking arrest risk. If I leave the bullhorn here, then I will assure that I will not get in trouble. God don't care how you come to church as long as you come to church. Well, let's see what all the way looks like. Would be nice for a press conference. On the other hand, it's flat out fucking illegal and could get me arrested. And I've already made it clear that I can't get arrested. Because you run for public office, you gotta wear a suit and a tie, you gotta put the red tie on for Republican, you gotta wear the blue tie for Democrat. I'm gonna wish I had it. Oh man, I wish I had it already. Fuck! Dilemmas, dilemmas. You've got dilemmas. Well, I've got a dilemma, you don't have no fucking dilemma. But the question is that, is anyone listening? Will they listen to a man with a boot on his head? Will they listen to a man with his, they say his beard look like balls? Will they listen to the guy who looked like the black Hulk Hogan of the Santa Claus? Shit, okay. Americans go by the way you look. This is why I created this look. Um, shit, okay. Vermin tried to boot, I tried to face your hair. It took me two decades to figure this out. Two decades to get to the people. And when, when I realized it, I got you suckers now. Perfect. Hi. Hi. Every dog has his day. And bow wow wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. Vermin gonna have his day. Steve, don't forget to follow me onto the train for don't get the shot like where the doors close and you're on the other side of them. Well, yeah, I know you're you, 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 you'd probably like to take the shot of, you know, me entering a subway car, doors closing, and like watching the subway pull up. But then you would be left on the train station, you see. That would be an awesome shot, though. And that's the last we ever saw of him. Hey! Don't forget to brush your feet! Sorry, Rob. I forgot about that part. Hey! Don't forget to brush your teeth! Yeah! Hey! Don't forget to brush your teeth! Eh? 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 Hey! Don't forget to brush your teeth! Hey! Don't forget to brush your teeth! Just flashback, sorry. Yeah. Good times. Secret times. <laughs> Vermin Supreme represents an American citizen who was born butt naked like all of us. Vermin <laughs> in the house! Vermin Supreme represents the intelligence of the human mind when it's properly fed. Sir, it is a no most doubt, no doubt, no doubt. pleasure. It's Thank an incredible you. moment here in America, the yeah. meeting of uh, McMillan and Supreme, the meme team. Yeah. I am Vermin Supreme. Vermin Supreme is Jimmy McMillan. That's right. That's right. Vermin McMillan. McMillan Supreme. All the way to the White House. Jimmy McMillan and Vermin Supreme is all of you. We met on a television station that none of you, most of you are not familiar with, called Chatter Space. It was on the internet. We have a crisis, the economic crisis, that no one in the country seems to understand. And I need you, Vermin, to step up with those teeth and bite a plug out of all of their backsides. 
Waking the people up, giving the people a choice, letting people know something is wrong. We wouldn't be running if something wasn't wrong. Don't you see? No, they can't see. They've been hypnotized. They're on hypnosis. They've been hypnotized by the same old Democrats and Republicans who found a way to get elected year after year after year after year. So I, I, I have a vision of uh, Jimmy McMillan saying a lot of things yeah. while he's talking that I, I will probably have problems with. You well, call him well, a homo? Yeah, wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, hey, For all those who are not educated on homo, you belong okay. to the species of homo sapiens. Okay. Educate yourself. Okay. You open your mouth. All right. So he's sort of like my Joe Biden. Everyone standing Thank here. Thank you. That was a good spin. Okay. Once again, of course, bourbon free. Learn it. Realize we're Educate starting, starting, yourself. starting to reconsider yourself. my decision yeah. of running mate. <laughs> I believe that I'll be having a lot of spin. I'll be saying what Mr. McMillan, what Mr. McMillan really meant to say was free ponies. Vermin never told nobody what that pony was. Uh, free pony, yeah. So there'll be a lot of that going on, I think. What was that pony? Was that pony a real live pony or was that pony... Did that pony meant jobs or did that pony meant love and understanding? And I just think free pony. Give the people the true definition of pony. The Verma talk about that a lot. So yeah, I think we're gonna take it all the way to the top. America's not about gun gun bottom. America's not about uh, somebody got mugged. That's all you hear. That's the press. I don't answer questions that said about the press. Where's the happy story? Old lady walked down the street, she seen a, a little bud of flower on the ground. And what she don't know is that during the summer somebody was eating watermelon and they spit the seed out of the ground. And so she went and scooped it up and she took it home and she had it in the window of her house and now she got one big watermelon growing on that little vine she picked up and scooped up. Where's the happy story? I've been working at Kentucky Fried Chicken, I thought you know. I've been keeping it finger licking way down below. 16 hours working with beaks. Christ, give my life some sleep. And I've been working at Kentucky Fried Chicken, oh boy. Well, I've been working on Wall Street, baby. I thought you know. I've been using that gold toilet paper way down below. Taking cocaine, banging strippers, making everybody a little less richer. And I've been working on Wall Street, baby, oh lord. Cool. That Kentucky Fried Chicken thing got me when I... <laughs> Where's the happy story about you? Your mother told you you're gonna put your pants on with no underwear, and you go to zip your pants up and your meat get caught in the zipper. Where's the happy story? Hit the rooster noise. <laughs> Those stories. He's missing the American culture. This is the American culture. Up early every morning. Gotta go to work. I hear that sound in the barn oh, no. from that crazy jerk. <laughs> Drive me crazy. <laughs> Where's the happy story? People don't know how to tell the happy stories no more. The happy stories have vanished. Coming on now are not one, but two presidential candidates. Let's lead the land more. Let's lead the land more. Man. Yes, yeah. Woo. First up, I see Jimmy McMillan of the Rent is Too Damn High party, followed closely by Vice President or President, this is Vermin Supreme. Happy anniversary to one and all. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. Occupy Wall Street, taking the streets one more time. Right. It's too damn high. You lost your home to foreclosure. You can't afford the student loan. Well, Mr. McMillan, well, how, what do we do about it? Simple. You waive the debt of the American people. Woo! You abolish student loan. We need your support once again. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And don't forget, before Berman go, rent is too damn high. Say it one more time. It's too damn high. Free ponies for all Americans. Thank you. Thank you. I can see them now at the gates of heaven. Walk up to the gate. Moses at the gate. Moses stand at the gate. You've been waiting in line for 385 billion years. He noticed a Wall Street executive way in the back of the line. First thing Moses is going to ask this Wall Street executive. Why did you steal the funds from people? You left people losing their homes, the mortgages, the foreclosures. He's going to say to Moses, well, I own Wall Street. Moses is going to say, you created this mess? Go to hell. Now, like I was saying to you, that's what's going to happen. You're going to die. You're going to die. 
You left this country a mess and you're gonna die. You have beautiful eyes. Can I play you a song? So tomorrow, you're coming out tomorrow? I think I'm gonna leave tonight. I, I, I've, got this, yeah. I've got a college gig on Tuesday. Do do do, do do do, do do. My name is Rob, I'm from Boston. You have amazing eyes, like they're electric. It's like, I'm really like swooning right now and like. I'm just going to talk to the kids and yeah. uh, about humor and politics. It's a lot of fun, because I did uh, it, I did it. Uh -huh. If you'd like to get like Thai food later, like I'm talking Pad Thai or something, like I can clean up really nicely. Like, I mean, yeah, you might see the cat ears and like the outfit now, but this is just a front. I would love to like hang out. Like we could go for Thai food. We could watch The Notebook. Would you like to watch The Notebook with me? Yeah, you come on. We could like have uh, Pad Thai and then The Notebook and then I'll light a Yankee candle. Sandalwood. You like sandalwood? What's your, if you're not allowed to give your name, that's fine, you know, even if, you could give me an alias, usually most women do and stuff, but like, I, I, I just, I'm really, I'm sorry, I, I know, I, you gotta stay in a, uh, this is embarrassing, I'm sorry. Well, it's been a good day, Barman. It has been a very good day. No stupid shit. Nonviolent direct action. Mic check. Mic check. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, we have a plan to shut down the entire financial district tomorrow. As a small cadre of the devoted prepared to stand firm in the face of Billy Club's sent to protect oligarchs, war drums prepared the faithful to confront not only the 1%, but also the waves that inevitably crash back upon any movement that sparks the hearts of the populace toward a new sense of what may be possible. Horses need their tooths brushed. Don't forget to floss those horsey teeth, okay? All right. Did I ever tell you how nice baby blue looks on you? It sets your eyes off really nice. Remember, minimal use of force to achieve your desired result. Thank you. Before returning home to prepare for his first big college speaking gig, Vermin had one last visit to make. A year after the movement's inception, Liberty Square was no more, and the New York City Police Department had transformed Zuccotti Park into a cage. Once this was a thriving metropolis. Sir, I love you, sir, and I'm voting for you this year because you, you're the only kind. hope America has. Thank you, you're very kind. I like the one, right? Thank you. Thank you. Down off the seat, please. We don't stand on seat. If we want to bake it up high, we do. Excuse me. Do me a favor, you can't have to stick in here. Right? Oh, they, they told me when coming in no, that I could. No problem. For you, for you, I'll do your favor. Be nice to my kids, okay?
got shot. What's your name? What's your name? Vermin prepared for the next day's speaking engagement, I watched from afar as struggle erupted once again on the streets of Manhattan. I feel like a lot of people are really fear failure and feel fear failing. And I think that's why it's like put into you to make you not try anything new. It makes you say so you don't challenge yourself to try something that might that might not work. You know, because you're afraid to fail and you must always succeed. Like everything has to work perfectly, so we only do this these processes we already know instead of challenging ourselves to try something. It's a public park. We don't think about like using public space to like make events for the public just to do it. And you, you can, right? That's what Occupy Wall Street tried to do, or trying to do, you know? Is just bring people together to actually talk about the shit that's actually happening. Instead of staying in like the haze of what we're being told is happening. And so trying to figure out how to like do outreach to actual people who might be interested that aren't already in your circle. <laughs> I think so. Okay. We have a system that's designed to set up two major parties, yet we still act as though third parties have a role to play uh, when we've created a system that pushes them out. So when I saw Vermin sort of disrupting the theater, being the only person on the stage that realized the farcical nature of the entire enterprise, I thought, this is a guy who has to come and speak to my students. Posse Comitatus, does anybody know about Posse Comitatus? The Posse Comitatus Act of 1878. But once again, it's another bedrock founding document, uh, a document upon which this country was founded. And essentially what it stated was that uh, active members of the U.S. military cannot conduct domestic law enforcement on American soil. I, I'm asking the uh, Washington, D.C. Police Department, uh, the Metropolitan Police, to please arrest these soldiers that are in clear violation of the Posse Comitatus Act. It's a very sensible act. It's to prevent the military takeover of the United States. <laughs> It's truly very important that people get out on the streets and, and exercise their rights because they are trying to take them away one at a time, piece by piece. And uh, if the people don't speak up, uh, we're not going to have too much of a country left. Well, they may or may not let us in with the, with the bullhorn, maybe even the guitar, we'll see. As Barack Obama and Mitt Romney prepared to face off in a highly regulated two-party debate, Vermin and Rob made an attempt to enter the free speech zone a few blocks down the road. They were turned away. No bullhorn? Nope. How about if I leave it turned off? How about if I give you the batteries? Nope. Hi, I'm Vermin Supreme. I'm running for president, and I'm here to debate Mr. Romney. Stand on the sidewalk, please. The closer they got to the debate, the stranger things became. Woo! You have no right for human sacrifice of babies! What would it profit? If a man would gain the whole world, oh, I put a baby show. in you. Are you ready to form? Because you show? kept talking about going and to college. <laughs> Raise so your I voice like a trumpet. Boo hoo. To my people. Now you shit. got something to Abortion do. Abortion is sin. I put a baby in you. Raise your voice one more like time. A yeah. I put a baby in you. 
are you really serious about being president or do you want people to just listen to you? Yes. Uh, Jill Stein and her running mate uh, were actually arrested trying to get into the debates here a little earlier. What's the plan? I'm undecided whether I will take that path or not. Maybe we should cross the street just for fun. Yes, but he... Good to see you. You're not going to be able to stay here. You're going to have to go back across okay, the street. Okay, how about a, about a moving picket? We can do a moving picket, right? No, 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 you can do it on the other side of the street. This is what you get when you try to have a voice. When I am president, things are going to be a lot different because you will be working for me. We'll be back. Thank you. Who will cross the street with me? Yeah! We have 34 seconds. Who will cross the street with me? Freedom's just another word for get on the other side of the street. <laughs> get on. And that's all they told Vermin and me. All right, we'll be back. What are they so afraid of? Why won't they debate me? Who will cross the street with me? Who will, who will join me across the street? All right, who will join me? Who will cross the street with me? Who will, who will walk up here and turn around with me and say hi? Can I speak to you? Uh, Mike, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mike, that is, we're going to stop it, OK? That's going to be the final warning. Okay. Just stay on the other side of the street, OK? Good luck with yourself. Can I, I can be here. Stay on the other side. Can, can I ask why? They don't want you crossing the street. Who's they, though? Our bosses. Oh, OK. Yeah, don't get me started on bosses. OK. Good night. Stop mixing Israeli politics into American votes. Legalize marijuana. Legalize the baby. Legalize the weed. As night fell, I began to question my own sanity. It didn't cross my mind in the moment, but looking back later, I wondered whether this debate, strange as it was, was somehow more authentic than the one that was broadcast into millions of American homes later that night. How did the world get this way? Excuse me. Did you after them? How, how did the world get this way? You were the start of Occupy because you made people think about poverty and poor people and children, and that got people the energy to get the Greek chorus that became Occupy. So you and there's started. one more. I got a call from Egypt before they had the uprising in Egypt, and they yes, also gave definitely. me credit for, for definitely. being able to be vocal. You going back over there? I think so. I'm just gonna go back, go back, go back home. <laughs> this is the only debate they're gonna have, so we we may do something on. Get Michael to do something on Chattel Space or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Chattel Space, something online. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll have to. Yeah, we, we, we can walk you to your car. Oh, okay. Walk you there. Wait right this way, or let's, let me see if I'm left to the left. Not over here. Way up. Oh, maybe, huh? maybe this way. Hold up. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, wait, let's see. Y'all hear horn? Y'all hear horn beat? Not yet. Oh, there it is, right there. I see, I see it. I see it, I see it, I see it. Yeah. This is stunning. It's like a business card. No doubt. Wow. This is where I changed my clothes at in the back seat of my car. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. See that? That's hot, baby. That's hot, baby. Okay. <laughs> like that Berman. Y'all take care of Berman now. We will, Jimmy. Okay, guys. Good night. Of course, be with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> White <Good> speed. <laughs> How come my car doesn't have a big wrap around of my head on it? Oh, you'll get there. <laughs> like, how did I have? How, how come here? I know, I feel Where like you it's get that tag like watching the Beatles hang out with Elvis, and you know, this is how you do it, man. <laughs> you get the car, you got your face on, you got the nut. Look at the lights. Let's get in front of the car. The lights. <laughs> wow. Hours later, Vermin and Rob came full circle and ended the night exactly where they began. There's nothing here. They took the stage down. But, uh, but I was told that I Facebooked like 12 people. They will be here if I get on stage with my guitar. I have a whole set. Knock yourself out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Rob from Boston. You know, even if the weather gets a little bit cold, 
you know, all these occupiers and protesters are willing to stay here to, well, what, what time is it? I mean, uh, you know, it's got to be like midnight or 1 a.m. Oh, look, it's 9.43. Okay, so it got a little nippy. Everybody went home. But, uh, one, two, three, four. Maybe God have a DVD that he records you and me. And let his drinking buddies watch us mess up while they're laughing their asses off like someone who will condom on my dreams because now I can't feel a single thing. <laughs> Three weeks later, and less than 12 hours before the polls opened, Vermin and Rob arrived at Mitt Romney's final campaign stop in Manchester, New Hampshire. I'm voting for Mitt Romney! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the next president and the next first lady, Mr. Mitt and Ann Romney! <laughs> Thank you, my fellow Americans. Mitt, 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 Mitt. The beauty of my campaign that I've discovered this year is that because of my presentation and my platform, it was perceived to be a nonpartisan critique on the system at large, and therefore attracted support from across the board. USA. USA! I love America. He does, he does. I saw it on Facebook. He liked it. It's just amazing that people are so willing to, to vote against their own self-interest and that they that the differences between the parties are just so few, but the few that are there are the ones that people latch onto and become extremely passionate about. Obama and Ron, you're the same, so vote for someone you know. The fact is that I have a real constituency and I have a real constituent base and I may never really be able to represent them in, in a real governmental way, but I certainly do my best to represent them outside of the government. It's effective and it's gotten media attention and that's how you get the word out. R-O-C-K in the USA! That didn't smell like alcohol at all. <laughs> well, that's one of the most wonderful things that I think came out of the Occupy movement that I saw was that these young people were activated, these young people were motivated, and they came together, and they will be working on the issues for the next 40 years. Martial law has been declared. I'm a little scared. As Mitt Romney prepared for his victory rally just across town in Boston, Barack Obama held his own triumphant ceremony in Chicago's McCormick Place, the venue that housed the NATO summit just blocks from where I first met Vermin less than six months earlier. Meanwhile, Vermin and Rob took to the internet radio waves for one final election night push. D.C., Delaware, Rhode Island, Maryland, and Massachusetts have been called for Vermin? Obama. Vermin won all those states? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. I mean, even if right now it's still the matrix and we vote between two parties, well, the world's always evolving, and who knows, maybe by 2020, you know, a couple states secede into Atlantis, and we put somebody there that can run it, you know, Jedi style, instead of right this little matrix game. I, th I think this, these numbers reflect the fact that many of my votes are simply not being counted and will not be counted. <coughs> Sadly, uh, the way the system is set up, um, we will have absolutely no idea ultimately of how many votes I actually did get. It's just a TV show, man. I mean, the real shit is happening behind the scenes and you're not really going to know about it until it becomes catastrophic yeah. or neat enough that it actually gets out there like what sort of happened in other countries. I type into Google sometimes, why are you watching me? <laughs> What's the response? They never answer. <laughs> it's a bunch of rich people trying to uh, write history for this country. So they get their elected leaders in there, they get their politics in there. On TV, they give their controlled history of what's happening. More and more, you see the cynicism on Facebook every day with all these people liking these very cynical JPEG photos because the attention span of people these days is they can only take in a JPEG photo at this time. They can only look at a Romney percentage. And they're all darkly cynical. And it's scary to see how much people like that. And people are not that dumb and they know what's happening. They're just too lazy right now because we're living or in the they're too busy time. working four exactly. or five jobs just to, make, just to make ends meet. Great point. It's Four years ago, 
support Obama. And during the primaries, I was interviewed by the AP, and I said I voted for, for Barack Obama because I like his optimism, I like his defense of the environment, and I like his consistency in not supporting the wars overseas. Well, what an idiot message, I am. But he just had no follow through. Sucker! <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap! It's a trap! It's a trap! Don't go into that Turn voting booth! Don't go into the voting booth! It's a trap! My friends, I am taking this opportunity to declare utter and absolute victory Yay. over my vanquished foes, Yahoo! the American Woo! public. Now, why the boot? The boot is a, dev it's a device, it's a tool that uh, uh, has drawn more attention to me and gotten me more votes than any of the 400 people who, who are running for president. I mean, people are spending real money. I mean, people spend their life savings. They, they sell their house to run for president in America. They travel the country. They, they have, they're passionate about their issues, and almost nobody listens to them. They're treated like crackpots. Why are they so excluded from debates? Why are their messages not being heard? Why are the two parties conspiring to present these two candidates, which are essentially the same thing, which are furthering uh, the erosion of civil liberties in this country, the, the destruction of the environment, the, 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 the corporatocracy, um, all these things. And they, they differ on some very small, minor issues, and that's enough to get people very excited. Right, so can I ask you, did you run He voted. Yes, I've been running for years. No, he Hi, voted. How are you doing? He voted for me. This, this gentleman voted for me today. Today. Oh, Absolutely. Right. Sorry, Absolutely. Kate. Yeah, okay. you're, you're probably the most honest candidate running. Thank you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Gonna yeah. smoke yeah. weed legally in Colorado. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hot, Hot dogs and applesauce. Hot dogs and applesauce. Come on. Hot dogs and applesauce. There's a lot of serious shit going down, and it's it's uh, it can be really heavy when you when you start thinking about it and looking at it, and a little overwhelming at times. But really, you know, you got to step back, and you got to do what you can do, and it's about you know raising consciousness and letting people know what's up, and then just making the making fun of it, just making so much fun of it that the that people can see how ultimately ridiculous it is. Um, so let's rock this world. Let's make a difference, and let's do it with absurdity. Yeah, we're a joke, but we're a pretty damn serious joke. So you laugh at us while the world is burning. And uh, then we'll talk about it, okay? Hardy, har, har. I'm Vermin Look Supreme, running now. for president of America. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Two months after the election, I met Vermin in Washington, D.C. for the presidential inauguration. He set out to be inaugurated in his own special way. Is this, is this the one? Hi, I'm, I'm Vermin Freeman, I'm president of America. Is, is this where I go in? Mr. Obama, tear down this wall! My fellow Americans and others, it is my distinct pleasure to promise to faithfully execute all Americans. I mean, the laws or something, oh, I forget, I, I, I knew that, but, okay, anyway, thanks for coming out today. The entire inaugural parade was walled in. The public had no choice but to enter through tightly controlled checkpoints or sit the ceremony out. Okay. Uh, mine. What's yours? Guards at the first checkpoint wouldn't allow Vermin in with his megaphone. Which president was, to, was the first to take the law in his inauguration? Which president killed the most civilians using drones? Anybody? At the second checkpoint, I wasn't allowed in with my backpack. All right, have a posse comitatus day. Yes, you too. I ended up going back around to the first one so I could meet Vermin inside. A strange expression came over Vermin as we followed the parade, as if he had been kidnapped or abducted by aliens and taken away from the real world, left without coordinates in this strange place, in the heart of an American empire. <laughs> continue a tradition that includes nationally televised performances and competitive success. The band has been invited to perform in five Nate Macy's Thanksgiving Day parades, 
The Rover will help lay the groundwork for Niagara's goal of sending humans to the Red Planet. And then, amongst the scattered pageantry, Vermin spotted the most powerful man in the world. Indefinite detention. What about indefinite detention? What about the drones? President Obama, stop the drones. Stop the indefinite detention of Americans. Stop the assassination of Americans. Got to do it while it's quiet. Stop the drone wars, President Obama. Stop the wars. Stop the indefinite detention of Americans, please. Thank you. You are sick. No, I'm not taking that. I'll leave though. Part of me wanted to see Vermin hop the fence, dash courageously through the parade, and hurl handfuls of glitter at the President of the United States on live broadcast television before being hauled away in handcuffs. But Vermin took another tact. He left gracefully, as do all who are in it for the long haul. He may have lost the battle, but the war is not over yet. This right here, this is mutual aid. No bosses, no slaves, no masters, just us helping one another. That's how we're gonna make it through. Hey, how are you? You have a food on your What, where? What? I don't see a food on my head. <laughs> You're silly. You do, nothing wrong with being silly. I think everybody's an anarchist. Everybody's born an anarchist. You know, everybody's born a free person. It's a race between a total environmental collapse and total government clampdown. But are the people really going to win? Are we going to really have that revolution? Are we going to see the, the golden age? No, I don't think so, you know. But we gotta struggle, we gotta try. I mean, we've got no choice. We're fighting for our lives. I'm trying to have a lot of fun doing it. People who held old ideas, they die out. It's the young people and the young ideas that, that come up.
at the heart of America just for you. All old people should vote for Berman and get a pony. <laughs> Finally, these hippies are going to get a shower. <laughs> In his autobiography, Chronicles, he said, uh, Dave Whitaker calls me the Beats Fingale for some reason. The Beats Fingale. What? The Beats Fingale uh, gave me a book, and that book changed my life. I sat down one person and got up another. Is that right? Is that like that? <laughs> 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 I got one person who got up there, and I guess the person he sat down, I didn't realize until pretty recently that the person he said he sat down uh, was this nice Jewish boy, Bob, Bobby Zimmerman, and who he stood up as was Bob Dylan, right there in my living room. It happened. I take care of wild animals, I find. The year before I raised a robin, taught it how to find, find worms. Lived with me, it used, to, it used to fly out in the morning and come back a half an hour later and, and come back and, and stay with me. Then, then over a period of time, I, it started to eat ants outside and then I took it outside and we dug a hole and he found a worm and that was it. He realized that the world was full of worms, and, which is the destiny of all robins to gobble up large quantities of worms. And so he, he left home. So Vermin comes over with this really cute little sweet little goat and so the goat runs out the back door, jumps out the window of my porch and going, oh my God, he's gonna break his legs. But he lands down, I guess about 15 feet and starts running around the yard. Vermin, you promised that the goat would be gone first thing in the morning. It's been a crazy week in Charlotte with the DNC. We had Vermin Supreme staying with us, but for security reasons, we didn't let anybody know where he was staying. I ended up doing a little bit of stand-up at his private DNC event, and a friend of, you know, in a circle of friends, she noticed I was drinking, and she was like, well, just go ahead and do all you want, drink, and I'll drive. So later that night, she brought me home, and when we got here, uh, Vermin was asleep on the couch, and she walks in, and she's like, is that Vermin Supreme on your couch. I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, is it cool if I just stay with you tonight? So to make it short, uh, thank you, Vermin, for getting me laid in 2012. I definitely got my vote. Ladies and gentlemen, severe weather is moving into the area with heavy lightning, gusty wind. Please take shelter immediately. We would like to take shelter in the convention center. Barring that, we would like to take shelter in the police station. Will we be allowed to use these two public buildings for our safety? Yeah, brewers want to keep your campaign vehicle up and running if you're going to be driving all around the country trying to get votes or whatever it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Donkeys? That's crazy talk. That's crazy. Oh, you can't put those in your car. They're nice. Yeah. Loving you. Love you.